next episode of Randoms. My name is Ant. What's going on, peoples? I got my man right here. What's your name? Payne Gusto, the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Where you from, brother? Brooklyn made, Jersey raised, you know what I mean? Yeah. Brooklyn Flappers area. Moved to Jersey in like six grades. I've been in like what, nine, six, nine, seven, been in Jersey? Different, I mean, I've been in different states, living in different states, but make a long story short, Brooklyn made, Jersey raised. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. I mean, what was the transition like coming from Brooklyn into a, a, a place like Jersey? Well, it wasn't too much of a place like Jersey. It was more coming to Montclair. Okay. Because mine from Brooklyn, so it's like, you know, from the projects with the buildings and all that, and you know, you got drug addicts and anything all over the place, crack vials on the floor, my hair shoot out at night. There was a park that was around the corner from my crib that like, almost every night there was a shootout. Like, me and my brother used to always like, yo, up, oh, 10 o'clock, we know it's about to happen tonight. Like, it was one of those type shit. Yeah. And, um, my mom said moving to Jersey. I was like, Jersey? Well, I think I'm, I'm in New York. Nigga, fuck you, man. New Jersey. They said Montclair. I'm like, Montclair? I never heard of Montclair. And I mean, it said when you don't, I mean, you come from the, from the hood like Brooklyn, you hear the name Montclair, you think Brady Bunch type shit. <laughs> so I remember the first day we moved here, and I'm sleeping in the backseat of the car. And when I, I woke I woke up, you remember the building? You remember the paints? Yeah, yeah. Woke, woke up and I seen the pink buildings. I was like, what the fuck? Mom, what you got us moving to? What, a place with pink buildings? Like, what's going <laughs> on here? But I ain't mad at it, man. Montclair was different, man. I mean, I, I'm, there's a lot of lyrical people. Like, it's the music that made me love Montclair. It's the, 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 the niggas that do rap and the people that sing and them. Like, it's a lot of... There's a lot of talent in this town, man. Very unique music scene out here, man. Very, very, very. Definitely. People don't know the outlaws. I mean, they this is they this is they stomping ground. I mean, you think out, outlaws a lot of times. People think West Coast, but they Jersey, man. You listen to their lyrics. They yell Jersey every chance they got. Definitely, definitely. Um, I hear that uh, Tupac was out here a lot back in the '90s. Yeah, I wish I was. I wish I was around for that. I, by the time I moved moved here, Tupac was already dead. I, I got here. 9-7, so, yeah. But I heard stories about Pop being out here, like, some people that I didn't know, like, Fatal Rest in Peace, like, he used to tell me some stories from time to time, Pop coming out here to chill with him and meet up with him and shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I want to talk about is definitely your music. Um, I got a chance to hear a lot of your songs. Real good, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate uh, it, appreciate it. Dope hip-hop artist. Uh, what's some of your influences? Um... It's, it's my influences. I mean, definitely life. If you if you can't put your life into it, it's like I can't even. I wouldn't even relate to it sometimes. Even if I don't know your life story, but if I kind of hear it in the music, I might respect you a lot more. Like, I don't know. It's, um, I guess it's more like the people I listen to. Like I listen to a lot of. I still listen to Wu Tang. I still listen to Royce. I still listen to M. I'm still listen to Joe Button. I'm still like some ransom. I'm like. I still listen to Naughty by Nature. Like, wow, wow. I still listen. I still got trench mixtape that I still bump and play right now. I still want to burst that shit. I got. It's a lot of the older music. It's the new shit I can't really fuck with. Okay. I mean, trench has slept on a lot, man. But if you listen to that old OPP and all that, now I'm saying he's a Tretch. very lyrical guy. Tretch. I want to say trench has slept on, except by people that rap. People that like lyrics and enjoy lyrics. That you know, trench is on their top ten, maybe top fifteen. Some people even got him in their top five. Like he's, he's one of those guys, like, yeah. But you gotta respect lyrics. If you just listen for beats and what's gonna turn up and get you lit, you gonna miss all this dope shit that's right, right in front of 38 Special, Griselda, Graf. Like, this niggas is dropping hard shit all the time. And it's, those rappers are gonna stay around. Not these little boot, not these little trap rappers, the Migos and all that. They'll, they'll be gone. No doubt. Last time we heard a Migos song. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't even understand what they talking about half the time, to be honest. It's a lot of mumble rap. Exactly. A lot of mumble rap. No, they, uh, we need raps that stick to your ribs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Talib? Some, you know some, some, some Talib? <laughs> <laughs> Word up. Um, so what's the last album you dropped, bro? Uh, it was House of Pain. It was uh, the, 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 the roots I dropped at the beginning of this year or was it late last year? Pretty recent, though. Well, recent enough. Um, House of Pain, I dropped that after I got out of jail. I was locked up for a while and wrote 
majority of that out while I was locked up, matter of fact. And when I came home, my uh, my homie that produced the whole the whole album, executive produced the whole shit, really high low key. He uh he had shitload of beats. He's like, yo, Payne, listen to this beat. And every time he played the beat, I just so happened to have a verse ready for that shit. I'm like, yo, let's, let's lock in. And I mean, he did the whole album just about. There's two songs he didn't produce on there, Tough Talk and um Tough Talk and uh, I forgot the name of the other song. Uh damn. My bad. Got the name of that song, but hey, there's two songs on there he didn't produce, but anything else, Hop Loki did that shit. It's, it's dope shit, dope shit. Wow. A lot of lyrical shit. And since I, one of the songs I actually wrote when I was in the hole, it's called um, Crazy Pain. And that song, I wrote that when I was in the hole. That's a little more, a little more deeper, I guess. Some people like it. I mean, actually, a lot of people like that song. It's a, it's a, it's a dope one, though. And being in the thing, that's uh, that's definitely an experience to go through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, is there anything that you brought back home with you, like mentally? Like, did it make you stronger? Were you able to uh, think your way out of different situations now? Like, how did it affect you? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I don't think, I don't know. You might have to ask other people that. Because honestly, for me, I don't think it really affected me too much. I feel like I'm the same motherfucker I went before I went in, while I was in there. Now that I'm home, I just feel like I'm the same. I think I still act the same. Most people that talk to me be like, yeah, I didn't even know you were locked up. You still act like the same nigga. Like, I don't, I always stick to myself. So it's not like shit really, you know what I mean? Real gonna recognize real. So whether you're locked up or in the streets or in the mansion with people and anything, they gonna see, you know what I mean? They gonna gravitate to who you are if they can, if they can feel that shit. Right. So you see a lot of people go to jail. They come home with Muslim garbs and uh, now they now they praying Sabbat and all that. With a, with, a, with a white wife. Right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> with a white wife. Get the fuck out of here. So, yeah. No disrespect if you got a white wife, but you know, man. Muslim, man. I don't know. I don't know the rules, so whatever. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. <coughs> so, where could the people find the music? On all DSPs. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Is Napster still around? That shit there, too. <laughs> See it on YouTube, whatever. I mean, it's everywhere. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep grinding. I got my little, little working on some projects right now. I got my nigga The Force on my Skrilla fam. I'm working on, we're working on two, two albums right now. And I'm working on another two mixtapes with my nigga Hot One Key. So I'm, I don't know. I'm working. Even though this COVID shit's fucking shit up, I'm still got to put the pen to the pad. Man, keep, keep me, keep me sane. COVID. Man. Tell me, uh, has COVID affected you? In any uh, way? For the best. Okay. Better. I don't know. A lot of people's fucked up off this shit. Me, I think I did. I think I've been doing better since COVID. I think, I mean, don't got to spend that much money, so you get to save some. You ain't got to go out and really be. This. Social distance is dope for a person like me that like to be by itself anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's dope. I like this shit. Give me, give me two more years of this. I only say two more because <laughs> you know, who knows? I might go crazy after a while. Two more years of this, I'll be all right. No doubt, no doubt. The social distancing thing, it's been all right. But uh, I, I've been going crazy with the whole mask situation. Every time I got to go somewhere and put the mask in, it's crazy. Now, the mask is just crazy. I don't know, been on the buses, the train, or whatever the case may be. So you walk in the store, put the mask on. Yeah, that's just the noodles. But, hey, if it makes some motherfuckers happy right now, I'm going to put them on. My mask, never mind. I'm going to talk about my mask. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool shit. I mean, like, so I generally ask this question to everybody. Um, what do you believe in more? Do you believe in religion or spirituality? Spirituality. Okay. I feel like religion is a, a let me see, is this another way of controlling the motherfucker? Like, like, most of us do know that back in the days the slave owners used Christianity to, to keep the slaves intact. And it says here, if you run from your master, and, I mean, obey your master. Yeah, like, why? Like, why, would, why would you want to be with something like that? Why would you be with something like that? And then it, a lot of people just follow some shit because their grandma or their mom was that too. Like, do you know what it is to be a Baptist or whatever the fuck this is? Like, 
you know what it is. Like you just follow me because your mom was that. And exactly. Then, generational, generational. Generations. And if you keep on going back through those generations, you'll see the roots, and then you'll be like, "Wow, that's some messed up roots." When, when I was in the <laughs> hole, when I was in the hole, I I had a, you know, sometimes they, the, the first time I was in the hole, they they let me take a few books in there with me. So I had, uh, I just so happened to have uh, the Bible, I had the Quran, and I had a few other crazy books. I sat like 15 days. I read that Bible twice. Wow. I read that Bible twice. This shit fucked me up. It fucked me up. I was like, because I read that as a little kid. You know what I mean? My mom, not my mom, my grandma, she was really big in religion. We went there, like, went to church every other night. Went on bingo night. We didn't get to play no bingo, but we was there too. Uh, you know what I mean? Had to wake up in the morning and worship and do all this other shit with the Bible and sing hymns and all that shit. Like, I, like, I knew about it as a little kid, but I always asked those crazy questions that my grandma didn't appreciate too much. Like, I would ask some, what the dinosaurs at? I don't know. Oh, so he did all this in a week. All this in a week. <laughs> and then as you get older, you start learning and stuff like Big Bang theories and shit. And you start being like, hmm, it kind of make more sense sometimes. I don't know, something. It got a scientific dispute for everything that's in the Bible, which is. A lot of shit, that scientific shit be sounding like, yo, that kind of makes sense. Like, I think right now Venus is going through the changes that the Earth was going through when the Big Bang Theory happened. So we're watching this shit happen, right? It's been going like this for a few years now. God did all this shit in a week. Why does it take this motherfucker so damn long? <laughs> That's a real good question though, but yeah, like what's going on with these other planets and if this took a week, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Wow, you see what I'm saying? Um, I think one big thing when it comes to religion is that when people do their own research, they get different conclusions than what they think, you know what I'm saying? Most definitely. Are you ready for that though? Exactly. Because you're gonna, you, if you, you want to learn about you, you're going to learn some shit. Mm -hmm. Even, no, not even just religion, anything. You really just big on like... Like, I mean, like people that end up becoming vegetarians, maybe like, it's the best way of life, da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Have you really done your, what would happen if your body just straight eat nothing but vegetables? Like, I don't think your body's supposed to be doing it. I think you're supposed to eat meat as well. Your teeth was made for both meat and vegetables for a reason. But I don't know. I ain't no fucking science major. Y'all know this shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, you got any stories that you want to share with the people? You know what I'm saying? Stories? Yeah. What kind of stories? Because, I mean, it all, shit. It all depends on what, what we want to I'm going to say an interesting story. Just any interesting story that you might want to, um, you know, get out there so people, you know. An interesting story. It's crazy. I don't know. Interesting story? I don't know. I'm telling you, that's something that just come up with. Yo, I don't know. Interesting story. Damn, I got a lot of stories. Damn. All right, well, let's try something maybe positive and uplifting. See, that's what I'm saying, because I'm over here trying to think, like, yo, if I tell these stories, I could be incriminating myself. Mm. <laughs> we don't want to do that now. <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> if I tell these stories right here, you know what I mean? Play your pain, that's crazy. So don't tell that story. Um, an uplifting powers, yo. I never really have too many uplifting powers, like power type stories, whatever like that, because everything with me is always just, it happens the way it's supposed to happen. Like, like even me being locked up, it was supposed to happen when it did. It was stupid the way it happened. I'll tell you that story, fuck it. Okay. Um, nigga hit me up about doing the show, and usually I do my due diligence. I sit back and I do my Google, see what the fuck the person is, see what the show, what the show's about and everything. I ain't do none of that. I was just like, yo, he's like, yo, do a show in Georgia. I'm like, yo, I ain't been out the state in a while, fuck it, I'm just gonna hop on this show and do it. Mind you, this, this shit I got locked up for happened years, like very, like very, very long ago, like over a decade. So I'm like, I ain't think about that shit really. I ain't think they think about the shit either. So I go out to Georgia, uh, Come to find out, the dude that ran the whole shit. Like, I'm at the hotel. I had to come out of pocket maybe three hundred dollars, right? Four hundred at most. You know what I mean? And 
So I get to the hotel and I'm meeting the other artists and shit like that. This person came out five thousand. This person came out fifteen hundred. This person came out seven. This motherfucker came out like I'm hearing numbers. And I'm like, hold on, I don't even want to tell these motherfuckers. I only paid three hundred to get out here. What the fuck is going on here? So I'm looking like, why is everybody paying different prices? But I'm not thinking too much about it. Fuck it. I'm gonna enjoy them. I'm gonna do this show. So then go to my go to my room. Changing my clothes, but we were to get ready in like 30 minutes. I'm changing my clothes and shit. Uh, the, the receptionist called my room. Yo, uh, da da da. We need you to come downstairs right now. There's an uh, issue with the show. I'm like, alright. So I go downstairs, and it was like, yo, the person that ran the show, Mr. Sutter, I forgot his fucking name, Muhammad something. Muhammad something. Um, He's a scam artist, there is no show going on. He ran, he, he jipped y'all for y'all money. That's crazy. So I'm looking like, oh shit. But fuck it, I only paid 300 to get out here. I got the hotel for the weekend. I'm not even mad. I called my peoples up already. They about to come meet me at the telly, pick me up. We about to go mobbing like, man, I know mad people out there in Atlanta. So I was good. I ain't give a fuck about none of that shit. This of course these people, 1500, 700. Uh, 2000, yeah, they mad, I get it. <laughs> Y'all niggas is tight, I get it. Me, I ain't gonna give up that 300. So then the cops came through, took everybody ID, so we could, you know, everybody get their money, get their name and address. So I go upstairs, back to my room, roll up. I come back downstairs, I smoked in the, smoked in the bathroom, but then someone was like, yo, let me go outside real quick. I had a lot of I had a lot of fucking shit with me that day. So I'm like, you know what, let me go outside. And as soon as I get downstairs, I see a cop passing past the elevator. This is like three hours later, so I'm like, why the fuck the cops are still here? Cop passed the elevator, and I look at him. I'm a shorty and I was like, yo, take this real quick. <laughs> All this I got on, you take that real quick. She said, well, I'm like, just take this real quick. And as soon as I walk outside, there with a the cop. And mister said my name, I'm looking like, I said Douglasville. I said, yeah, I was like, motherfuckers. And boom, that was it. That was the beginning of, that was the beginning of my year. Damn. On, on my prison bed. Bit 365? 365. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That was, that was, that was, that was, a, but that, I mean, that was, that was me. Now, anytime I go back on something that I don't usually do, something happens. Like I said, I usually do my due diligence and see who the person is. If the shows legit, how long they been doing shows, and da, da 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 what happens with this artist and all that other shit. I ain't do it that time. Ended up going, going to fucking prison for an old ass warrant. Wow. So, I mean, that shows the importance of doing diligence. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. 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 Even so now, even when motherfuckers hit me on Instagram with a, yo, we got to do this for you, I can do that for you. Let me see what's going on. I'm on, I even Google your email, nigga. <laughs> I actually want to backtrack for a second, man. Do you have a favorite song that you've done? You know what I'm saying? Or maybe a favorite album that was just like, that stands out in your mind that you like, I love this shit. <laughs> I think my favorite song probably would be Get It On. That might be one of my favorite songs. Nah, Candles. Mm. Candles. Candles was a, it's, it's a video on YouTube and it's, when you, and you, Listen to it on Spotify, sounds all muffled and all shit. I don't know why. She got uploaded that way. I don't know. Um, but the video's on YouTube. And um, and Candles is, is, is pain and gusto. I always tell people pain and gusto is two different people. Pain is, is going to give it to you raw. You know what I mean? You're going to chop your head off. You know what I mean? Find a way to feed it to the, to the, to the piranhas and all that shit. Gusto, he's a little more subtle. He's a little more... Lyrical miracle, he gonna play with words and talk his way out of situations. And I mean, he's a little slick with his words. Put them together, they got pain gusto. It's the perfect band. You're my two person. <laughs> so in the song, it's pain and gusto talking to each other, and, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a real dope song. Like that's probably my favorite song. The concept is, is fire. And, and when you watch the video, it's back and forth, pain and gusto, pain and gusto. And I'm really going back and forth for myself. It's not like I'm just. One verse pain and the other verse gusto. Nah, it's like two bar pain, other two bar gusto, four bar, four bar pain, two bar gusto, six bars pain. Like it's, um, yeah, that shit was crazy. I like that song. That's colorful. That's my shit right there. Yeah. 
Get It On is one of my favorite songs too. That's another, I got another video for it. That's one of the videos up. That's probably the most viewed video, video I got too. Like 4,000 or some shit, but that's a white video that I want to get out. But that's one of my favorite songs too, like rapping real fast. Like a lot of people don't know I started rapping fast. You know, actually, that's a lot. A lot of people know I started rapping fast. <laughs> When they when they people met me, my, my rap name was Velocity the Marksman. Okay. And I shout out to my nigga Lethal. He gave me that name. Rapid rap Fire. I'm twi Twister. You know what I mean? That was he's one of my favorite rappers. So I was anything like that Twister, Crucial Conflict type shit, I was on that shit. Do or die, Bone Thugs of course. I was on that shit. So I used to rap nothing but fast shit. Niggas couldn't hear me. So I started slowing it down. And when I start slowing it down, I was like, yo, I can't keep calling myself Velocity, but I don't rap fast like that anymore. Not all the time. I can still do it, but I don't do it all the time. And then I, uh, Voice by Nine dropped that one album. Damn, forgot the name of the album. But on it, he got a song called Who Am I? And I was like, I'm listening to that song, and it's off of Pop Me. Pop Pain Me. That pain, you know, you don't take me your love, you know what I mean? So, he went off that shit. Usually, I don't like when people go off of pop beats. I like when people lead, lead pop beats. Like, hey, most rappers, I don't, yo, when the rapper die, leave that motherfucking beat alone. I don't give a fuck how you slip it and all that shit. It can be dope and everything. I don't want to hear you on it. But, this nigga voice killed that shit. Okay. And on it, he was talking about pain. Everything was related to pain. Everything he was talking about pain. I was like, yo, this shit is a dope ass fucking concept. He's like, yo, pain, like, who am I? Look, nigga, I'm pain. I was like, yo, Royce, I love you, man, but I gotta take this from you, man. I started <laughs> calling myself pain. It also came later, but yeah, I called myself pain. It was just stuck with me ever since. It's fire. That's the origin story right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's dope. That's dope. I mean, uh, when did you drop uh, the Velocity, though? Know, like, uh, like can you give us a time reference? Velocity the Marshman, I think that's around. Sophomore year high school. Okay. Sophomore year high school, so that's like what 2001, 2002. And, and Velocity was over with after that. But I still I still get on my rapid fast shit when I need to. People still know me for that shit. And I'll be I do a lot of other shit. People say, yo, yo, man, you did that fast shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a skill though. You know no, it is, it is. I mean I appreciate it because not too many people can actually just can rap fast and still catch the attention. You can rap fast all you want, but the niggas still want to hear you rapping. Like, after like 30 seconds, niggas be like, ah, ah, ah. Like, somebody else goes to sing it. He just, <laughs> he just going brrr. <laughs> I think uh, in our generation, a lot of people pay attention to lyrical content. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, it seems like all they want is, is beats. And I don't know, I think flow is more yeah, I give everything a, nowadays. I give a, a good shout out to my brother Kenny, my big brother. He, um, uh, he, uh, he's the reason why I started paying attention to lyrics. So when I was younger, first of all, the song that made me love hip hop is MC Light, motherfucking um, Poor George. That song, when I was a little kid, I didn't understand what she was talking about, nothing, but that beat was crazy, the way she was flowing. I was like, yo, who is this chick? And she, that song right there made me be like, yo, I love this fucking, this, this rap shit. Like, that, that song did it. But I didn't understand what was going on. I'm just listening to the beat. I'm listening to the way she rapping. I'm not really listening to the words too much. The way she rapping was cool, but that beat was just so amazing to me. And then my brother, he was like, yo, you gotta listen to these lyrics. Like, listen to what they saying and all this. Like, I, I don't remember how old I was, but I think it was like 92, maybe 93. Maybe 92, I think. And then, I mean, I'm not understanding really like that. I'm like 10 years old, just about. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, lyrics and shit. But he just kept saying, yo, listen to lyrics, listen to lyrics, listen to lyrics. And I start listening. And they go Wu-Tang and protect your neck. Now that's shit. Shit. That shit right there, that's that's the song that made me want to rap. Mmm, that's funny. It's Method, funny that you said Method that. Method Man verse on protect your neck. When I said, when he said the smoke from the lyrical blunt made me, oh. <laughs> Yo, I was a little kid and I swear, I was like, yo, what the fuck did he just do? That he just he just made the cough sound, your brain said cough, and it rounded what he said before that. It was just it was I don't fire. know, it was it fire. was fire. I was okay. like, yeah, meth. Yeah. 
Oh, you know, the, interesting, I got a fucking Wu-Tang shirt on, too. The funniest <laughs> thing about that, though, was, like, that actually inspired me back in the day was um, Wu-Tang. It was actually Ghostface, the song Cam A. When I heard that, I was like, yo. Like, it just changed, it changed music. I was like, yo, you know what? Uh, I want to rap now, you know what I'm saying? Because that it was inspired, you know what I'm saying? That whole Wu-Tang wave was just that was something special. That was the birth of a lot of these rappers that we, that we look up to now, like that, that, that right there, right there. But to sit now was just, hey listen, party, I get it. We had our party people too, we had Kid and Play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, like we had some party motherfuckers too, but even Kid and Play was rapping. Like, listen to the niggas while they doing they ain't gonna hurt nobody. But listen to what the niggas is spitting. The niggas is rapping still, like. There ain't nothing wrong with partying, but rap, nigga. Put some words together, like. Put some shit together, make me like, yo, you heard where he put that, where he said that, or. Why wow, he played with the words that way. Like, I've always, I don't know. Once my brother had me pay attention to the lyrics, I was like, alright, I get it now. Okay. It sounds like your brother was a big influence. At, the, at that point, at that part, yeah. At that point, after that, I took off on, on my own. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he introduced me to lyrics, but after that, it was all that. It was all me. Yeah, it was all me. Damn it! I tell you, uh, one thing that was big for me is I had a I had an older cousin that was actually putting me onto a lot of music at the time, and um. One thing I remember listening to when I was a kid was uh, Slick Rick, The Adventures of Slick Rick. Man, I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? I still come back to that, you know what I'm saying? I come back to that and I'm like, that was just a dope, dope, dope album. Now, nah, Slick, Rick, Slick, Rick, Slick Rick was definitely one of those, once again, you gotta once you pay attention and respect lyrics. And, and Slick Rick wasn't lyrical, he just knew how to put a story together really, really well. Like, like same thing with Ghostface. Ghostface put, you, put a story together, like, even though Ghostface is good with the wordplay and shit, but he, Give you a, like that. All that I got is you. Mm -hmm. This with Mary J singing on it. Like, even if you've never been through that, I know niggas that cry to that song. Like, I know niggas that listen to that song and cry. Powerful. Like, that's Powerful. different. Like, same thing with Pop. Pop got songs like that too. What? Listen to some of his songs, and I've, I've seen niggas cry listening to some Pop songs. Like, that's Dead different. Mama. Dead Mama. Come on, man. People listen to Dead Mama and have no choice but this is like. I might call your mom and text her real quick. Just cause that song was on. <laughs> like for real. Facts, facts. That's what, what that's saying? what that's what music's supposed to do for you, like. To the end of time. You know uh, one pop song that really, really, really uh, left a mark with me was uh, Ballad of a Dead Soldier. Ooh. Man, when that song come on, man, Ooh. I get this feeling. Yeah, that, <laughs> see that's some shit you work out to right there, man. Yeah. That's that shit you can just be like, man, listen, I'm about to toss somebody around, man. <laughs> Play that shit when we about to purge, man. Watch. Play <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit when we about to purge. It's gonna go hell. What? Nah, uh, that's 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 what I like about music. Though. Uh, um, what should they do now? It's cool. Whatever for them, I guess. It's not for my ears. Don't get it twisted. When I shit on it, then I do shit on that shit a lot. It's cause I'm listening. I'm still listening to it. Cause I want them to change my mind. Yeah. Like I like Jay Z. You know how long it took me to like Jay Z? I hated I hated Jay Z for so long. I started liking him in volume three. Wow. Wow. I don't understand, you know, reasonable so doubt for me was like incredible. You know what I'm saying? Volume one, but even to this day, I still go back to Reasonable Doubt, listening to Regrets and 22 Tools and The Evils. I'm like, wow, this I is. I, so, well, a lot, I ain't gonna lie. A lot of that shit was my pot bias. Pac said the nigga was courting, fuck it, he was courting. I, mean, I was a little kid at the time. Whatever Pac said, well, that was that was gold. Pac said that, hey, he said fuck Jay-Z, fuck Jay-Z, man. I won't listen to none of that shit you talking about. Fuck that nigga. Now, volume three came out. I forgot what song in that shit. Oh my god, was it the I said the murder, 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 mur, mur, mur. I was like, alright man, hold on. Is that so gangster? Yo, my that God. so gangster or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that, on the, that, that same album. That album right there. Yo, the way he was rapping on that album, I was like, let me, let me go back and listen to this one. Because this nigga was, was, he was kicking some shit. I go back to Reasonable Doubt, I'm like, ah. He 
even though I'm a little kid, but I'm still like, yo, what is, why was I hating this guy? <laughs> why was I hating him? Then, you know what I mean? He changed my mind. So I was like, don't get to it. If I hate you, I'm still gonna listen to your music. So you can change my mind. Even the rappers I listen like, niggas I, I meet now. Like, if you look at my DMs and my emails and shit, it's from a lot of people around that just send me their music because they want my opinion on it because they know I'm going to give it to you raw. Like, yo, I don't like that shit. I can hear button knocking off in the club, but it ain't going to bump in my car. Mm. Like, I'll be on some shit. Like, I'll, like, I have no problem telling you this shit's corny. Even if my shit, my shit could be corny, I'm still going to put it out, though. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody going to like Somebody it. Somebody going to like it. <laughs> and I, I, hey, don't, don't, don't say this because just because I say it's just corny don't mean don't put the shit out. Like, Fuck about hype, baby face. Like, I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, shit. I run DMC. I ain't create this shit. Like, but don't let niggas knock you from that shit. Just keep putting your shit out. That's right. That's right. So I'm still gonna listen. I'm still gonna shit on it too. I'm still gonna call you shit corny. I'm saying that's just mumble. You know? Did you say that? Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, I would say, like, I'm gonna ask you about your own lyrics. That's what's up. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's that critiquing. That is, that is increase somebody's skill level, you know what I'm saying? Because now they so. know, you know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to my brother Bananas. He used to always, yo, man, that shit trash. Get the fuck out of here. I'm like, nigga, if you don't get the fuck out of here, <laughs> I'll go home and rewrite that whole fucking verse. <laughs> All the time, I'll go home and rewrite that shit. Go and the, the next studio. time around, it's and crazy. he'd be like, yo, all right, all right, what was that bullshit you saw I spent yesterday? Like, Bananas would be like, that was some bullshit you saw to rap yesterday, nigga. That, what you did right there, that's that fire. Now, that bullshit you was, nah, nah, throw that shit, that's in the garbage? All right, leave it there. <laughs> shout out to the man. Yeah, shout, shout out to the big bro. Bro. So, game. So, yeah. I mean, uh, wrapping up, is there anything that you want to talk to the people about? Anything you want to promote? Anything that you got coming out right now? I got Pain Gusto to God is the EP I'm working on with The Force. And I'm working on Ain't No Such Thing as Painkillers, one and two. Mm. Uh, working on the podcast with my nigga Cannon Jones. We about to put that together soon. Just look out on that. Uh, shout out to Cannon Jones. He's a, Cannon Jones is a battle rap dude. I mean, I met him through my, my nigga Lethal, whatever like that. And I just started listening. That's how that's that's how the interaction starts. Yeah, that's how Listen. I just started because he, he put a post on Facebook like yo I, I I did somebody to put a song out against me some shit I'm ready I'm ready. So I right, boom here you go, boom quick two two minutes at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my nigga though. So man we working on the podcast together right now. So be on lookout for that. I mean shout out to Cannon Jones. I mean, definitely, definitely, definitely. So you know. Um, Links to you. Uh, Just type in Pain Gusto anywhere. That's it. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Just type in Pain Gusto. You'll see me. <laughs> it's that simple. Ain't no. You gotta find an underscore. Make sure you go to this link. Nah, no, just type in. You'll find me. I gotta say, um, I'm very appreciative. I was able to spend the time I'll with you. Right, first, you, man, you know, the interview. You know what I'm saying? For real. We've been supposed to do this for a while. Absolutely, man. I tell you, the music is incredible. Appreciate it, appreciate Everybody it. support this man right here. You want to get some real good bars. I promise. Very you know lyrical saying? stuff. Lyrical Especially stuff. with the uh, the acapella joints you the, uh, played. Yeah, the acapella. Yeah, Ooh. the acapulco freestyle. <laughs> acapulco. Yeah. Shout out to Martin. That's where I got the acapulco from. <laughs> it's fire. So, you know, to the next time around, y'all stay safe. Peace.